we'll continue with our last shot, which is going to be a little bit easier, and we're going to stay as procedural as possible for that. So I keep going, I do link and copy to conform to scene workflow, I rename it B30 right away. I duplicate the whole collection, unlink, I rename it to P30, and everything in it will no longer be used. Maybe we can keep the light system we had set up, so I'm going to rename it to make sure we know where we're going. We can keep the same camera, but we will rename it as well and make sure that it is indeed the one that is rendered. You can check that here. The camera is selected in the scene menu. We can begin the cotton flower, which would look like this. If we look at the rendering, we should have a few more curves than in the viewport, and so we would have this kind of cotton sphere that we will also have to think about helping to make it a little softer, a little smoother. So to do that, we delete everything and we start over. I create a simple object, and he's going to be our cotton flower. It's mostly a plane that will serve us as a container for geometry nodes. There. I create cotton flower and directly behind add curve empty because we're actually going to benefit once again from the way cycles renders curves. I can take it out same, I'm going to do alt p to unparent it, clear parent. I remove this geometry node that it had on it and I'm going to give it the exact same one that's called cotton flower, which means that he is now going to behave like the first. In this one, it's not going to be very complicated, but we're going to do everything procedural and we're going to model all three at once. I'm making a little room for myself and I'm going to start by creating a curved circle. The curved circle actually has 32 points and a single spline. In fact, what we're going to do is, we're going to directly put a is viewport condition to have a little bit more to render. I put a switch and I switch it to integer, so it might disconnect again. I'm not doing things in the right order. Here I'm going to put 4096, and here I only put 1024, and I connect that into resolution. Now we have 1024 points. I see that I have 1000 points, and we're just going to change the coordinates of all of these points. So I add set position, I'm creating a random value that I'm switching to vector and then I tell him to go from minus one to plus one, and we normalize that. And now that's going to give us a sphere now. If I visualize this, we should see that cables are tangled in each other in the form of a sphere. This spline type, and we're going to change the type, and we're going to put in catmull. Now we have this kind of a slightly softer division. I'm creating a duplicate element, and then we're actually going to create the two extra spheres to have three in total. And I set it to splines. Now I have three splines in all, three spheres. So I make a little room for myself, I put a set position node at the very end, and I start by bringing in a position node. A vector math add node to move it around a tiny bit, and we're going to look at everything that's going on a little bit as we go along. For now, I'm going to move a little bit on the x-axis, but not quite one, although I could set one to have a sphere perfectly away from the x-axis. In fact, I want it to be a little bit tangled, I'm going to put it at 0.8. Then I create a distance node and a separate xyz node, connect my output in both. Here I create a multiply math node. I'm going to take the y-axis, here I add a map range, and I put in the following coordinates. I'm going to from 0 to 2, we fit the values from 0 to 0 to 50, and I'm putting that in the second input of the multiply. It creates a rotate vector, and actually what it's going to do, it's going to contract my sphere a little bit. That's it, it gives it this kind of profile, like if they were already squeezed together. I'm making a little room for them, and then we're going to add an index node. Evaluate on domain, and so here I'm going to look at the domain of the splines. Our result will be 0, 1, and 2. I divide that by 3 because I have 3 instances, and I multiply by 2 times behind. I'm going to connect it into a second rotate vector, this time it's going to put all my instances in the right place. We end up with our three spheres as it should be. While the spheres are done, we're going to focus a slightly more on the leaves that needs to slip in between each cotton ball. So for that it's a bit longer. So we're creating an object with nothing in it, just a plane, and we're going to start by building a grid. I'm creating the thing, I'm going to call it cotton leaf create a grid node. 
gives it the value of 2.5 in x, 1 in y, 32 by 16, and isolate it to see a little bit better what we're doing. So we've got this grid that's been built. I store the UV attribute that this node offers right away, and I call it UV map as Blender usually calls it. And it's not a float, it's a 2D vector, so I can plug into it. So there I see on my vertices, I do have a 2D vector that has been stored. I'm creating a subdivide surface node, and I'm gonna put a subdivision of two on it. That'll be enough. It's just gonna add a tiny bit more topology density without overloading either. Add Shade Smooth and Geometry to Instance. And that's just going to help us convert our mesh into an instance so we can duplicate it more easily because then I'm putting a duplicate element node I want three and I'm going to duplicate the instances. Same thing, I store an attribute right away because it gives me the ID of each instance and that can be quite useful. So instance ID integer and I store it immediately. I'm doing Realize Instance and now I have three complete items. Add a node named attribute and look for the UV we created. Separate XYZ. I plug a float curve node into X and I start tracing the profile a little bit of the sheet. If I do that and then I recombine, and for now I'm going to put it in Y this time. Synect them in multiplying the initial position with here 1 and 1. So as not to change the base position, but just to change the thickness of the sheet like that. Set position, and we can look little by little at what we are doing. I connect it into the position. I create a vector rotate node to fold the edges of the sheet. To do this, I need the position. Separate X, Y, Z. And I'm going to take the position that I have in Y. Then I'm plugging it into the multiply. Just to give it a value, I'm setting to 0.5 and I plug in here. This is not the right axis. It will be in X and we have to free Z. I put a second one in and I'm going to plug the exact same thing into it. In fact, we could actually take up that element rather than take up the position. Repeat it a second time just to bend it a bit more and not to have an angle too constant. I'm going to make little boxes around the elements with Control J. We're also going to now fold the sheet so that it can surround our cotton spheres. I add a vector, rotate again. I plug directly into the position. Changes coordinates slightly because it's actually going to be on Y that there's going to be a rotation. And either we use the node that we've built here or we recreate a small separate XYZ. I plug everything back into it. I'm going to put a math node in multiply add to invert a value by offsetting the X axis this time so I connect here. Then you can see that it bends, but not in a, the right direction. We have to invert the coordinates slightly and move a little bit. Once again, we can also keep everything in the same chain. We don't have to put this position back right away. So now that we have our leaf modeled, we can add a little bit of noise to it on the edges. And then most importantly, it's slightly wrinkled look that may arrive on the side. Here, I'm immediately thinking about putting an offset of one to move all the leaves to the edges, and then when we will rotate them, we will end up with leaves on this side and on that side, and not everything put like this. So here, I create an add node vector math. I add an named attribute and call the UV that I'm going to plug a noise texture into. And we're going to put a little bit of roughness. Here we subtract 0.5 and we add scale node to give it a bit of amplitude. I add a separate XYZ node, I make a float curve node where I connect the UV and Y. And I multiply to give it a quantity. The curve must be made into a sort of U. In terms of quantity, there may be a little too much and we're going to reduce it. Then we can focus on the rotation of each leaves. And I see that here I didn't put the right properties. You have to store on the instance the ID of the instances. So here, instance and not in points. I'm going to go back to the end. I create a vector rotate. 
here I'm adding named attribute. I'm going to go query the ID instances. I divide them by three because I have three instances. And then behind that, I multiply by two times pay for a full revolution. Here, it's a small add only. To put a small offset on top of that, the center can't be at zero since we were off center in the node just after. I have to put minus one to compensate for it. We have the leaves that come to spread out and I can even put a vector math add node here, in which I will offset a bit underneath. In this ad, I have to put not much here so that I just create the offset necessary to contain the cotton balls in the sheets. If I now observe how it behaves, we have three balls of cotton that are contained in the leaves. I'm going to go get in my first scene with Catrol C, I duplicate the element. And I paste it into my my third scene. Maybe we'll also take a good look at how it unfolds and how we can connect everyone. So for that, now that we have this one who comes unfold here, I think we're going to put it a lot smaller and a lot thinner and we can either put it on each of the cotton heads or on the contrary maybe put it well in the center. And if it happens to put it well in the center, it can also be something that interests us. So basically, we're going to push it a little bit more, uh, make it more discreet, and then that way when it's going to unfold, we will then be able to connect with our previous shot cut. In order for there to be a better connection, we may also change this geometry node and add a very small, small variation at the very end where we're going to say that all the points that are a little bit close to the center are also going to be able to rise a little bit in z-axis. So for that, I add position node, vector math, distance. We're going to look at what we're doing. There I look at the position of each sphere. I see the distance. And in fact, I see that there is a gradient in the middle, which is black and white. I'm going to go and make a map range of this distance. So from zero to one, I want it to go to one to zero. So we really see the maximum influence that's closer to the center. We're going to use it as our transition element from the initial position to a slightly higher position. Same thing, I'm going to do a second node position, a vector math, add, and we're going to create this position a little bit higher up. If I put a set position, we look at what we're still doing, I'm plugging into the main path, I'm going to disconnect it. I plug the result of my position into a position. I'm going to get a little bit higher. We're going to go all the way up to one, and we're going to do a vector mix. It's just a simple mix that we switch here to vector mode going to be the initial position and the transform position, but only constrained in the fall off that we built here. I'm going to do this multiply, and we're going to go over here. So if I look at it, I've got my center wires that are going to start getting stretched. I will promote the value. I connect it to an input group. This input group is going to control the between the two. For now it was at two. I'm going to set it to zero. As the animation progresses, I put a first key. And at the end of my animation, it's going to be totally stretched. There you go. You can call the whole distance, but without starting from the center, just putting the distance as if we were in 2D. So I'm just going to multiply z by zero. And if I look at it, it should be smoother. We're going to make set material and add a material. 